Hey everybody, it's Wayne Saldani. This is going to be my final update for the 2019 Chicago Yacht Club Race to Mackinac. Thanks to everyone who listened in. Hope you enjoyed the videos. And um, let's just look at the race. This is the cruising division. Just sort of, a, you know, look back at high speed. Remember they started in a lake breeze. They um, went into the, the wind for a very short time and they transitioned out of that lake breeze. Uh, then they started beating back and forth. And then after the cold front came through and clearing, it's a very, 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 very light winds here on the 14th of July. Um, on Sunday. Uh, the leaders of the fleet were able to work through those light winds. I'll back this up just a little bit, right? You can see infinite diversion of Wycott working their way through light winds into what were heavier winds up here at the north end of the lake, but a lot of the fleet ends up being hung up until uh, Sunday into Monday when we had some storms come through and really pump the, pump the winds a little bit here. Then on Monday night, we had another sort of struggle of light winds for quite a while in the Straits um, until the whole cruising division Came home safely, soundly, um, and congratulations to White Hawk. Congratulations to, to, to everybody. And I'll go through the winners in just a second. The racing fleet. Let's see. It looks like they fast forwarded on me and I wasn't looking here. Here's the racing fleet. So they got started on Saturday afternoon and they started a beautiful offshore breeze. Um, from the beginning, it was clear this is going to be a west of the run line race, and I kept calling that out. Here's the cold front comes through. They're tacking back and forth. And I want you to really watch this next little part here. Um, sociable, I pointed out, was along the shore, and I really, in general, was watching the boats in this area because it looked like they were going to end up going faster, we thought, from the forecast and the boats back here. Watch that begin to happen. Look at the boats back here kind of sitting slower, even over here sitting slower, while these guys go faster and faster and faster. Um, and I could show you that section by section, division by division, and it really was an outside the Manitou's to the west side of the lake you know, kind of race, clearly favored on one side. We had storms again come through on Sunday, um, excuse me, on, on yeah, Sunday night and again actually last night on Monday night. Um, and there was some really slow stuff last night for the last, boy, 150 boats or something like that to come in. It really took a while for the majority of the cup division, um, the uh, slower boat division to come in. So um, again, this race was about west of Rome Line. This race was about um, not being too far west of Rome Line that you sailed enormous extra distance. It was outside of the Manitou's route absolutely the call, which is a very, very unusual thing in this race. Um, it was a real strategy race. Sometimes it's a boat speed race where you're just, you know, sailing the same course as the guy next to you, just trying to go faster than him, grind him down, wear him out, or, or vice versa. This one really was about being in the right places at the right time. And so, you know, congratulations to everyone who did, um, who completed the race, honestly, and especially the people who placed or, or even won. Um, I've got a couple of tabs up here that just, uh, some closing thoughts. Um, first, the you know Chico two. It looks like these are uh, these aren't official yet. Our winner in the trophy division um, with sufficient reason. Hawassi behind them. Congratulations to everybody. Eagle is up there, a perennial winner or placer in the division. And we'll look at section results in a minute. They did really well in their section also. Um, in the cruising division, uh, Perico um, is the winner of that section, followed by Roxy. Our division, excuse me, followed by Roxy and then Infinite Diversion. And we've got Joycey. Uh, they're in fourth place, and it looks like they won their section. We'll take a look at that in a second, too. Goat Rodeo uh, appears to have won the cup division unofficially, um, with uh, Benetou 36.7, Soul Shine in second, who actually was one of those boats that went west. Um, I think probably if I look at it, all of these boats in the top of the section went west. Um, with Synchronicity, Callisto J109 is rounding out the top four in the division. Um, and it's uh, uh, you know interesting. Clearly, it was a, a race where not only they made smart decisions, but the points of sale that they ended up were go on were, were good for those boats. So congratulations to them all. And then our multi hull division, even though Earth Voyager was the first boat to cross the line, congratulations to them. Caliente, a longtime competitor in the race, uh, corrected out in first uh, by division. Um, by section, I talked about Soulshine, the Venetu 36.7s. Wired in the 40.7s, and you can just sort of read down this page. Roxy, the cruising division, Perico, Joyce C, we mentioned, um, Pterodactyl, Goat Rodeo. I don't want to name everybody here. Rowdy, Nomata, Caliente, Sagamore, Sim Duda, Lindsay Duda, Transpac 52, Sufficient Reason, Chico 2, Eagle, that's uh, O'Neill's very well sold boat, Mrs. Jones, Madcap, Surprise, Odyssey, Liberty. In the T10 section, it was a very, very competitive section. One thing I want you to look at, and I'm going to end with this thought, is uh, this column right here. This, uh, sorry, you can see me do my cursor. It's the third, kind of the third column from the left there. It's the elapsed time, how long it took to complete the race. So 45, 52, 48 here for Chico 2 and so forth and so on. You just go page down. 
And there's a lot of times here in the 40s and 50s. In the cruising divisions, it's 60s and 70s and especially 50s. And in the cup divisions, 50s, 60s, kind of high 50s and 60s. We call this kind of a slow race. I call it a slower than average race. Uh, in retrospect, I think that this is one of those races when you talk to someone, they're going to say this race had everything. Um, it had a beautiful breeze. It had low breeze. It had storms. It had calms. I'm sure there were flies out there. Um, and that's the Mac race at its best. It's all of those things um, going from beautiful weather to rainy weather to, to no weather. Um, you know, fighting your way up to the island for three days um, is what the Mac race is all about. And I, it was, I'm sure, going to be a memorable race for the competitors for everything that it held. Um, I am getting some questions about how slow this race was, though. And I just want to show you one more um, I researched this just a little bit. It's going to take one second to get up. The, we have the historical results here. And in 2007, remember I showed you those times a second ago? In 2007, WindQuest finished in 28 hours, and I couldn't find another boat that finished in anything like just under 48 hours was the next boat to finish. And then this big boat division, most of the boats finished in the 50 to 60 hour, let's call it 55 to 60 hour range. And in the small boat division, like the early boats were finishing 60 hours. So in terms of this being a slow race, it was a slower than average race. Look at these times, 79 hours. But it wasn't a slow race, not even the slowest race kind of in the modern history um, uh, of the race. Um, so I think that, again, I think a lot of, you see a lot of happy people today at the, um, at the awards. And congratulations to everyone. And thanks to you all for listening along in what was uh, certain to be a, a memorable 2019 Chicago Yacht Club race to Mackinac. Thanks and take care.